Photography News. The stars above me are closing in, so walk and roll me home. Day will come, but night is long. The siren song still calls me young. The Knowledge of the oceans is more than a matter of curiosity. Our very survival may hinge upon it. Collapse of critical Atlantic current is no longer low likelihood, study finds. Scientists say shocking discovery shows rapid cuts in carbon emissions are needed to avoid catastrophic fallout. The collapse of a critical Atlantic current can no longer be considered a low likelihood event, a study has concluded, making deep cuts to fossil fuel emissions even more urgent to avoid the catastrophic impact. The Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, AMOC, is a major part of the global climate system. It brings sun-warm tropical water to Europe and the Arctic where it cools and sinks to form a deep return current. AMOC was already known to be its weakest in 1600 years as a result of the climate crisis. Climate models recently indicated that a collapse before 2100 was unlikely, but the new analysis examined models that were run for longer to 2300 and 2500. These show the tipping point that makes an AMOC shutdown inevitable is likely to be passed within a few decades, but the collapse itself may not happen until 50 to 100 years later. The research found that if carbon emissions continue to rise, 70% of the model runs led to collapse, while an intermediate level of emissions resulted in collapse 37% of the models. Even in the case of low future emissions, an AMOC shutdown happened in 25% of the models. Scientists have warned previously that AMOC collapse must be avoided at all costs. It would shift the tropical rainfall belt on which many millions of people rely to grow their food plunge Western Europe into extreme cold winters and summer droughts, and add 50 centimeters to already rising sea levels. The Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation is weakening and has collapsed in the distant past. A weakened Gulf Stream would raise sea levels on the Atlantic coast of the U.S. Warm surface water carried north from the equator returns as cold, low salinity, deep water carried south. The new results are quite shocking because I used to say that the chance of AMOC collapsing as a result of global warming was less than 10%, said Professor Stefan Ramstorf at the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research in Germany, who was part of the study team. Quote, now even a low emission scenario, sticking to the Paris Agreement, it looks like it may be more like 25%. These numbers are not very certain, but we are talking about a matter of risk assessment where even a 10% chance of an AMOC collapse would be far too high. We found that the tipping point where the shutdown becomes inevitable is probably in the next 10 to 20 years or so. That is quite a shocking finding as well, and why we have to act really fast in cutting down emissions." Unquote. Scientists spotted warning signs of a tipping point in 2021 and know that the AMOC has collapsed in Earth's past. Quote, observations in the deep, far North Atlantic already show a downward trend over the past five to ten years. Consistent with the model's projections, said Professor Sibrin Drifthout at the Royal Netherlands Meteorological Institute, who is also part of the team. Even in some intermediate and low emission scenarios, AMOC slows drastically by 2100 and completely shuts off thereafter. That shows the shutdown risk is more serious than many people realize. The study, published in Journal Environmental Research Letters, analyzed the standard models used by Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC. The scientists were particularly concerned to find that in many models, the tipping point is reached in the next decade or two, after which the shutdown of the AMOC becomes inevitable, owing to a self-amplifying feedback. Air temperatures are rising rapidly in the Arctic because of the climate crisis, meaning the oceans cool more slowly there. Warmer water is less dense and therefore sinks into the depths more slowly. This allows more rainfall to accumulate in the salty surface waters, also making it less dense and further slowing the sinking. 
forming the feedback loop. Another new study using a different approach also found the tipping point is probably going to be reached around the middle of the century. Only some of the IPCC models have been run beyond 2100, so the researchers also looked to see which of those running to the end of the century showed AMOC was already in terminal decline. This produced the 70%, 37%, and 25% figures. The scientists concluded such numbers no longer comply with the low likelihood, high impact event that is used to discuss an abrupt AMOC collapse in the IPC's last report. Ramsdorf said the true figures could be even worse because the models did not include the torrent of meltwater from the Greenland ice cap that is also freshening the ocean waters. Dr. Aixu Hu at the NSF National Center for Atmospheric Research in Colorado, U.S., who was not part of the study team, said the results were important, but it's still very uncertain when AMOC collapse will happen or when the AMOC tipping point is going to cross because of the lack of direct observations of the ocean and the varying results from the models. The study found that a total collapse of the AMOC was unlikely the century was led by Dr. Jonathan Baker at the Met Office Hadley Center in the UK. This new study highlights that the risk rises after 2100, he said, but these percentages should be treated with caution. The sample size is small, so more simulations beyond 2100 are needed to better quantify the risk. Nonetheless, Baker said, the ocean is already changing and projected shifts in the North Atlantic convection are a real concern. If a collapse is unlikely, a major weakening is expected, and that alone could have serious impacts on Europe's climate in the decades to come. But the future of the Atlantic circulation is still in our hands. Sounds to me like the AMOC issue requires more study, and here at D2 Inc., we're rolling out what is going to be another new product, which will be our AUV CTD. This is an AI rendition of what the aluminum hard-coated duplex sealed version will look like. Here is a drawing of what has already been put to production and these will be able to fit into existing AUVs and profilers and gliders that already have these types of CTDs built in but will give them more accurate data with higher sample rates and be able to go to deeper depths than they're currently able to do and therefore improve the industry in many ways and the accuracy of these reports regarding the AMOC as these give salinity, temperature, and pressure data, which is how you also determine density of the ocean. The of the climate report highlights global ocean temperature records. National Oceanography Center scientists contribute to the 35th annual state of the climate report. Sea surface temperatures at record highs greatest average ice loss for 55 years. The world's climate continued to break records in 2024. Global temperature across oceans and land and sea level and ocean heat all reached record highs and glaciers lost more ice than in previous years. That's according to the 35th Annual State of the Climate Report, the International Annual Review of the World's Climate published by the Bulletin of the American Meteorological Society features key contributions made by several National Oceanographic Center scientists. The report is compiled by 589 scientists across 58 countries. Record high sea surface temperatures. Dr. Richard Corns, a principal research scientist at Knox Marine Physics and Ocean Climate Group, led the night marine air temperature section of the global climate chapter, which noted that strong El Nino conditions in the equatorial Pacific were a key factor in elevated sea surface temperatures. Daily average sea surface temperatures were at record high levels for a sustained period of time from the beginning of 2024 up to late June. Dr. Corns emphasized the importance of the report and its findings. The state of the climate report underscores the ongoing need to continuously monitor the global climate system drawing on evidence from diverse data sources. It provides an authoritative insight into our current position, providing a clear reminder of the impact climate change is having on our oceans, as well as the world as a whole. Other key findings, ocean heat and global sea level were highest on record. The global mean sea level was at a record high for the 13th consecutive year, reaching about 4.0 inches above the 1993 average when satellite altimetry measurements began. 
Glaciers around the world continue to melt for the second consecutive year. All 58 global reference glaciers across five continents lost mass in 2024, resulting in the greatest average ice loss in 55-year record. In South America, Venezuela became the first Andes country to register the loss of all glaciers. In Colombia, the Conajeras Glacier was declared extinct, joining the list of glaciers that have disappeared in recent years. Arctic saw near record warmth. Arctic had its second warmest year in the 125-year record, with autumn, October to December, having been record warm. During the summer, an intense August heat wave brought all-time record high temperatures to parts of the Northwest, North American Arctic, and record high August monthly mean temperatures at Svalbard Airport reached more than 52 degrees Fahrenheit, 11 degrees Celsius. Antarctica saw continued low sea ice. Following record lows in 2023, net sea ice extent was larger than last year but continued to be well below average during much of 2024. The Antarctic daily minimum and maximum sea ice extents for the year were the, each the second lowest on record behind 2023, marking a continuation of low and record low sea ice extent since 2016. David Jen Stensrud, president of the American Meteorological Society, said, The State of the Climate Report is an annual scientific landmark. It is a truly global effort in which hundreds of researchers from universities, government agencies, and more come together to provide a careful, rigorously peer-reviewed report on our planet's climate. High-quality observations and findings from all over the world are incorporated, underscoring the vital importance of observations to monitor, and climate science to understand our environment. The results affirm the reality of our changing climate with 2024 global temperatures reaching record highs. From John Miller who writes, food for thought, excuse the pun, but like the open net salmon farms out of sight, out of mind. And a story from Blue Marine Foundation, exposed never seen before footage reveals the catastrophic impacts caused by bottom trawling. Bottom trawling is still allowed in many so-called marine protected areas worldwide, and perhaps even more astonishingly, it is subsidized by governments. Very few places are safe from this, including almost nowhere in my country, says David Attenborough in the film Ocean. A poll reveals overwhelming public support for a trawling ban in protected areas. It follows the cinema release of a feature film Ocean with David Attenborough, which has opened the eyes of audiences the graphic scenes of the destruction caused by trawling, filmed in greater detail than ever before. The bottom line is, you can't have a marine protected area and trawl it. From the surface, you would have no idea that this is happening. It has remained hidden from view until now. Modern industrial bottom trawler scours the ocean floor with a chain or metal beam, forcing anything it disturbs into the net behind. It smashes its way across the seabed, destroying nearly everything in its path often on the hunt for just a single species. Almost everything else is discarded. Over three quarters of a trawler's catch may be thrown away. It's hard to imagine a more wasteful way to catch fish. We stand at a crossroads, protect our ocean and save our planet or continue to plunder our greatest natural asset. Which side of history will you be on? If you want to learn more, you can go see the film at oceanfilm.net. It's Ocean with David Atborough. That's where that clip just came from. 
Story from Witzel Oceanographic Institution. A splash of color can go a long way. Salps use jet propulsion to glide through the water without leaving a trace of evidence in how they move. With just a few drops of harmless green dye, former MIT Huey Joint Program graduate student Kelly Sutherland was able to study salp locomotion at the Liquid Jungle Lab in Panama. Slipping into the water for a night dive, she watched as the fluorescent dye traced the salp's movements and shed light on another mystery of the ocean. In a story from Miguel Sanchez Gomez, researcher at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, says, I'm excited to share that our new paper has been published in the quarterly journal of the Royal Meteorological Society. In this study, we investigated eyewall turbulence in Hurricane Laura 2020 using high resolution large eddy simulations. Some key highlights include validation against surface boundary layer in mid tropospheric observations, a detailed description of turbulence in the lowest 300 meters of the boundary layer, showing that grid spacing of less than 10 meters may be needed to capture turbulence statistics such as variances, skewness, kurtosis, and spectral coherence. Our results provide the most detailed description to date of turbulence inside the eye wall of a historical tropical cyclone, demonstrating how high-resolution simulations can complement limited observations and help inform the design and resilience of coastal and offshore infrastructure. Huge thanks goes out to Giorgios Descos, PhD, and Julie Wundquist for their help with this program. Our last story comes from the very exciting Sail Drone platforms, and they are excited to announce that the Sail Drone Surveyor, the largest of their three USB platforms, has received full classification from the American Bureau of Shipping, ABS. This landmark achievement sets a new global benchmark for unmanned systems and highlights Sail Drone's leadership in developing fully classed open ocean capable USVs. The ABS class certification is more than a certificate. It's a signal to governments in the maritime industry that sail drone USVs are mature, safe, tested, and ready for scale, said Richard Jenkins, sail drone founder and CEO. Knowledge of the oceans is more than a matter of curiosity. Our very survival may hinge upon it. <laughs>